Good afternoon everybody. I just want to show you some of the new library items that we've got available. I'm just going to show you how they all work in this drawing I have. It's just uh, an office room and we're going to look at some hardware components such as locks, casters and some lift up opening systems. So first of all what I'm going to do is I have a mobile pedestal to bring in here but I want to put these new library items into this pedestal. So it's just a simple uh, mobile pedestal. Um, it's got some drawers in it. They're max fit drawers. So first of all, I'm going to turn off the drawer front so that we can see inside. And then I'm going to turn off the hardware layer and the drawers themselves. So with top solid, you can see all the machining is applied already to this library item, but we're just going to add some more. And I'm just going to show you how simple it is to add machining to something if you have smart library items. So let's go to include standard to include a new library item. We're going to go for IJS and we're going to look for hardware and then locks. So first of all I'm going to show you the central locking bar kit. So when I click on it you'll see that we have some different codes here. We've got a rotary lock either one side or two sided with the 12 or the 17 mil lift option and each code has their own reference number which we'll see in the hardware list later on. So firstly I'm going to click on the inside of this carcass I just go OK so it detects the faces and I confirm the thickness and then let's see how many drawers we have, three, I'll go OK and let me just turn on the hardware so you can see that it's been included OK, there it is, it's a one-sided lock let me turn the drawer fronts on just to show you as well and by clicking this button automatic all my machining gets applied to three of my parts the end right hand for the groove the bottom for the pocket and on the drawer fronts as well which I'll show you now so this lock and bar can be used not just for mobile pedestals but any carcass or drawer combination at any size So here we can see the hole in the drawer front and let me just turn around the back and you can see it goes the whole way through with the other drill holes for the drawer runners. Alright. So this locking bar is done. What I want to do next is show you how the casters work. So all I do is go to other component, I look for caster and I pick the driver. So the drivers are the ones that you use. And the way this works is I click on the front face of the bottom and here we go, simple as that. Now I'm just going to turn off the hardware layer which is 23 uh, just to show you the automatic machining when it comes in. And there's just a 3 diameter 2 mil deep hole just for positioning. You always have the option not to put the machining in as well if you didn't want to drill those parts like so but I'm going to click automatic because I want the machining. Okay. And there they are inside the driver block at the correct height. So the great thing about library items like this is that they have um, complete flexibility over what you want to do. Let's just say I wanted to set in the casters 100 mil. I go to my parameter options and I change the front setback from 50 to 100. I can do the same from the left side in and I'll just make that 80 just to show you um, that these can be moved around. The machining will also move with it as well. Okay, I'll just put this back to the way it was so it's a little more stable. So one of the next things I'm going to show you about this library item and many other library items is that even with the design, so see how this is uh, has a brake on it and it has a hooded wheel. I can actually interchange the type of caster with a different one. I can use this nice feature called subcomponent. And with the different library items that we've got, this is the front left one that I'm changing. I have a drop down here and these are actually all the Hayfully, um types of casters straight out of the book with the reference numbers. Um, so for example if I wanted to go with a treaded bolt I can get this option but this is more for kind of metal and steel work. 
what I want to do is change it to maybe, um, I don't know, with no hood on it. Okay, so you can see that it's changed and I can click yes to update all the rest of them. And if you had uh, quite a few of them, they would all update at the same time as well. So this is actually a very quick way to change the type of fixture fitting that you've got. Um, and you'll see that all the machining stays and they all stay in their correct positions. Okay, there's our mobile pedestal done. I'll just save this and what we'll do is we'll bring it into our office space. So I'm just going to include the library item and because I have it open I can select it directly from this drop down. There's a nice new feature here in 616 called dimensions and this is great because if you have a library item that's drawn inside a driver block you can still insert it and use positioning constraints to position it in your project without the need for a volume. Now I need to constrain it. So all I simply do is say this face is set off the floor 64 mil for your caster and go OK. And then I say, right, I'm going to align the right hand side of this to the inside of my desk that I've got here. And the last thing to do is to give it its third and final constraint and I'll just say it's flush at the back here um, and I'll set it off maybe 10 mil. Okay, uh, I'll set it back less because it's sticking out. Five will do and then I click stop and that's it. It's fully constrained, it's positioned but still having the option to reposition it anytime you want. Now the reason I like having the hardware in here is because you can see if anything clashes with each other like the locking bar to the drawers. So this is actually very powerful because it means that you don't have to make a prototype. You can see it all with the correct sizes of your hardware before you process anything. Now, I want to show you some of the other library items that we've got. So let me go include, and these are going to be the lift up door systems, okay? We've got a pretty comprehensive range. We've got all the Blum Aventos, the Grass Canavaro, the Hayfully and the Headache ranges as well. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to use the Blum Aventos, and here we can see that we've got all the different types covered, and they'll all have their own reference numbers as well, depending on obviously the one that you want. So all I do is simply click on the inside of the cabinet that I want to insert it into. I go OK, I don't want to inlay, and I just confirm some of the parameters like the door gaps and a door thickness. And that's it. It's in. It's done. It's made it the right size of the cabinet. And when I turn off the doors, we can have a look at the hardware. Okay. There it all is. Now let me turn off the hardware so that when I click the automatic button, we get our holes in our cabinets. Okay. So no figuring out where it's positioned. You just click on the inside of the cabinet straight away. Let's modify and change the type of Ventos system that we've got. I'm just turning off my layer so it's easier to see. So instead of this one, how about we go for the stay lift? And it changes one, I click yes, and it changes the rest. And that's it. It really is that simple, okay? How about we use um, the Hayfully brand? And we'll go for one of these. And we'll go for type C, okay? Again, click on the inside of my cabinet, I go OK, and I just confirm some door gap sizes that I want. These are actually linking them all together. And again, let me turn off my hardware. I'll click automatic so that we can see the machining happening. There we go. That is now done. OK, so you've seen the machining on the cabinets. How about I show you the machining on the doors? So let's turn off the carcasses and the wall. Let's turn this around. So what's cool about it is you can see all your hardware, but let's turn that off. And there's all your drilling ready to go. Okay. So let's turn our layers back on. And next what I want to show you is uh, some of the locks that we've got. Okay. And these locks can be used on any doors or um, 
anything you want really I suppose. So I'm just going to turn the doors off so we can select the inside of the cabinet. So in our library let's go to hardware and we'll select locks again. And here you should be selecting the drivers, okay? The driver is like your driver block, which automatically fills up the space for you and positions it correctly. Now this uh, Samo deadbolt rim lock is from the Hayfley catalog. And these are just all the positions of where you would like the lock, okay? So this works in from the left hand um, bottom and it's vertical, so that means that the plate is fixed into the bottom of the carcass. So this is the offset from the edge, so I can type in maybe 200 or something and then confirm my door thickness and there we go it's positioned in and again when I click the automatic button it makes the hole in my door like so and there's the drill positions for the plate so let's just say I wasn't happy with that position I wanted to change it I use my modify function and I just pretty much select which one I want and now that's working into the top. How about we go for the right hand side? And how about we go for, okay, I still want it on the bottom again. So I'll select bottom vertical. And that's it. And um, if I want to shift it back to what it was, I just type 50. And there it is. It's on the right hand side of that unit. So. It's pretty easy as you can see, okay? So there's some of the new library items that are out. And yeah, just utilize them as much as possible, okay? Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's one more thing I wanna show you, which is the hardware report. And the way we achieve that is we go to draft. This icon that I selected can also be found in the drop down menu under file. So then I select assembly and I click on this document to select all our parts in this assembly. Then from our template drop down, we select material edging and laminate report. Now you should have this, if you don't, you can contact us and we'll send it to you. You can just click no for this option. And then we zoom in and have a look at our hardware report that's created in our drafting environment. Okay, so here we can see a nice long list of all the hardware that we need that's contained in what I've just drawn the room and all the library items that I just inserted. And they all have their correct ordering numbers as well relating to the supplier. So not only are these library items visually good to see if anything clashes, they're also good because they do machining and you can get a detailed ordering report from this. So now I'm just gonna print this to PDF. We'll pick uh, to scale and this drawing and we'll go OK and we'll just save it on the desktop and drag it over here from my other screen and there we go there's our hardware report and you can just print that off and that's it um, very quickly and easily to get a summary of all our parts the new and old library items that we have in our library come with all these reference numbers these smart library items making ordering much easier with Top Solid Okay, so there we go. That's um, the inclusion of some library items. Um, there's nothing to stop you creating your own and adding your own reference numbers, but we've done some of the hard work for you. Okay, look out for more library items to follow. Thanks.